Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode. And today we're going to talk about finding your art niche. But before we get onto that, we want to say a big thank you to our latest Kofi supporters. Not only does your support help us towards the costs of running Kick in the Creatives, but it also shows that you like what we do. And we're going to thank each of you personally at the end of the show. And also thanks to our sponsor, Evolve. Evolve can teach you to paint in a realism style to a professional level in a year or less. Not only do they provide all of the lessons and support online, but they also send you all of the materials you'll need. And you can watch a free webinar from Evolve by going to kickinthecreatives.com forward slash Evolve webinar. Or to hear more about the Evolve program, you can go back and listen to episode 67 and 73. And thanks also to everyone who's been sharing their work for the challenges with us on social media. We love seeing what you do, but now there are just so many people that it's really impossible to pick people out. But please do keep sharing with us because we do love seeing it. Yeah, we do. And so, Sandra, what is new with you? Well, um, I have finished my marble painting, as I think I'm... I don't know if I said that last time or whether I finished it shortly after the last episode, but I finished that one, which is great. Got that finally up on my website now. Um, Just got one more layer to do on my bottle painting. I say bottle, it's got marbles in it. Um, But I've got just that final layer to do, just the detail, really. So then that'll be done. So that's great. And then I will be looking at starting something new. And I'm thinking of doing something much bigger. Oh, right. Yeah, Marbles like a, again or? No, I think I might go back to the wine bottles. I really enjoyed painting the wine bottles with fairy lights, but do a big version. But yeah. I'm going to have a little bit of a break from painting again before I get directly into another one. I'd like to sort of have a couple of weeks off. Um, mainly because I'd like to really get back into my drawing habit because, you know, we talk about how um, habits are easy to, are kind of easier to lose than they are to, to actually start. And, and I used to draw every day and I did that for a couple of years and, and then, you know, life gets busy, doesn't it? And got out of the habit and then it was a bit sporadic. Um, so, yeah, I want to just, I don't know, have a little fun playing in my sketchbook really and getting back into the drawing for a little while just for a couple of weeks and then once I've got that back as a habit I can then do that um, perhaps every morning like I was and then do the paintings in between what I want to do is I want to focus more on the drawing than the painting in a way the painting will still still be my main thing yeah but what I mean by that is I want to prioritize let's say prioritize the drawing so I can paint when I've done my drawing Right, because okay. Why is that it's very e- well because it's very easy when you're painting to feel like you're doing art because you're painting. But the thing about art is, you know, whether you, whatever you are, whether you're a painter or or anything, even a sculpture, I, I guess you you know the the main part of it is knowing how to draw, isn't it? And if you don't, yeah, draw, listen, no. I, I feel like if a drawing is the foundation to to everything I do as a on my canvases, it's still the foundation as in knowing. Yeah, it is for your, your type of art. Yeah, yeah. So I find that if if a draw if a painting takes me a month to complete, once I've drawn it out, then I've drawn it, haven't I? And yeah. then the rest is just the painting. So I feel almost like I'm, I've got a bit rusty with the drawing side of things because I, I don't put enough time into just doing that. For its drawing, for drawing's sake, not drawing for <clears throat> the sake of, oh, I'm going to paint this, so I'll draw it out. So, yeah, yeah so I want to prioritise that uh, again. I want to do it every day or at least five days a week, just for half an hour, an hour, something like that, just to, you know, brush up on those skills and keep that side of my my art sort of active. Apart from that, um, still having a bit of fun on TikTok, which you, you kind you of... You are so good at that. <laughs> you found you, your thing i uh, yeah well yes but you should it's have been quite a funny comedy because... sketch person that's what you should have been 
<laughs> but it's quite funny because obviously if any if no one listened to uh, a few a few episodes ago we were talking about tiktok and i was like oh god no i really just can't be bothered with tiktok it's just another thing to do and and then you said and i said it's all for kids it's just kids dancing and in, in playgrounds and all this not interested but then you joined it didn't you and you said actually it's really grown up it's it's, yeah, it's it has got grown quite up. a bit different yeah. and i think car yeah and carmel jenkins she's on it and i was like all right okay well you know these people are not you know 15 year olds so i'm gonna have it i'm gonna have a look check it out so i went back on it and i thought oh i'll, I'll give it a go but what I found about TikTok is I use it in a very different way than I do my Instagram. So I, I am um, being... It's your alter ego. Let's say I'm just... Yes, so it's a di- completely different side to me, <laughs> as well as the arty stuff, obviously. Um, but it was quite funny because since I, I mentioned this on the last episode, I noticed a few new followers who I recognise from Kicking the Creatives yeah. and, you know, the people that follow us... <laughs> Uh, and they had come over to the dark side. <laughs> Cheryl Moore was one of them. She was one. And now she's got a TikTok account of her own, and she is bonkers. She's an absolute nutcase, and you should she's definitely brilliant. check out her videos. She's she's uh, and she's also a, a great, a really good artist as well. Really, yeah. really good. But she does these creative videos, not not on art really, but just I can't explain it. You'd have to go and see her. But uh, yeah, she's she's really good. And um, Jackie Paluski. She arrived last night. All right, <laughs> <laughs> to the dark, to the dark side, and um, and I do you know what? I, I I wasn't sure if I was delighted to see them on there or slightly <laughs> mortified that they'd see this other side of me. So, yeah, apologies to anyone who checks out some of my videos. Some of them yes. are absolutely fine, and some, some are rather naughty. Yes. They're a little bit naughty, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from that, there's nothing really else new with me. What about you? What is new with you? Well, nothing to top that, I'm afraid. But um, oh, hang on. Has... Well, I know you. I know what you've done recently. You have applied uh, for. I wasn't. I wasn't going to mention that. Um, yeah, I. I wasn't going to go for portrait artist of the year. I wasn't going to put anything in it because I just thought, oh, I hate drawing myself. It means you've got to take a selfie, doesn't it? And it's like, oh, I'm not good in... I'm not photogenic. Um, but anyway, you persuaded me, basically, didn't you? Yeah, you've got to be in it to win it, haven't yeah. you? So uh, I went for it. And I thought what would be kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, a little bit was if I actually put those words, hate self-portraits, on yeah. my self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know what else. But yeah, so that... and. It, I wasn't sure if I'd finished it, and I thought, I don't know if it actually looks like me very much. I thought it did. Well, I took it upstairs, and Kevin was on the peloton at the time. He was cycling, and I go, does this look like it? He goes, oh, yes. And then I sent it to you, and you said it did. So, um, yeah. I would have known straight away that it was... I would have known it was a self... Yeah, even if you hadn't told me, I'd have said straight away, oh, that's a self-portrait. Oh, right. Yeah. So, anyway, and you you were then trying to get me to submit, because you have to put in at least one other portrait, and you can put another one in as well if you want. Yeah. And uh, you were trying to get me to draw a celebrity and put it in, and I said, no, I'm just going to do what I've got already, because I don't want to invest too much in it. Yeah. Although yours don't take very long, so it's not really an investment of time in in a way. I don't want to. It's an investment in... In I don't want to draw try and a random to get in... celebrity for like no reason. No, but there is a reason though, isn't there? No, but I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> oh, yeah, I but it depends how much you want to get into portrait artist of the year. No, 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 because I don't think you should bend over backwards that much for. Well, uh, all, the only thing I would say is because I think that that they do want a likeness at the end of the day they want a complete i think your style is so unique and that is what i think is you've got on your side is this style i've never seen before the only thing is obviously that you also want a likeness which is not something that you tend to do you just use a, a person as a reference so i just thought it'd be a good way of of demonstrating the fact that you can also get a likeness in this amazing style of yours so that's why i just thought you need to do that as well yeah anyway, but you are just stubborn you're a stubborn <laughs> stubborn person i know she stubborn, wouldn't do it i don't so. i don't like being told what to do you don't do you no, no. so so that was, that, that, that was one thing and then also we had um, some friends around and i was chatting to one of the women and she's um she's a bit 
she's crafty more than arty. She originally, she didn't actually go into it in the end, but she studied fashion years and years ago. Um, mm. But she's got a friend who joined the local art group and she'd got some of her work in. The basically, the local art group have now got a shop in our, our shopping centre, our local indoor shopping centre. I don't know how they've managed to wangle that, but they have. Um, and she said, if you join it, you know, you can possibly get some of your stuff in there. So I got in touch and I've joined it. And uh, yeah, now I can put some bits of my art in there. Oh, that's amazing. So I've got to frame some up. That's the and trouble, isn't it? Having to frame so, is expensive, isn't it? Well, I'm not. I'm not getting them framed. Framed. No. I'm just going to frame them myself. Right. Um, by that's ready-made sort of frames, mm. because if I if I get them framed, that's going to basically add half the price on top yeah. of the yeah. thing, and it will just make it so it'll be beyond the price anybody would pay for anything in there, yeah. basically. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to frame them up myself. And also then, if they don't, the person doesn't like the frame, they can just change it, can't they? Yeah. So, but you know what I mean? If, you, if you're charging, say, um, £250 for a painting, yeah. it's going to cost me probably 150 to get it framed. 100 Oh, it's crazy what frames yeah. cost, isn't it? So that yeah. immediately makes it 400 quid. In. it is frustrating i mean some of the paintings i do i just think wow i know that i could if i framed those exactly as i wanted to I, yeah. it, it would make them look spectacular in the in these frames but the frames are then extortionate and then of course the person buying it is the one that ends up having to pay for the frame that they might actually prefer to have a different one anyway. Exactly, so yeah. I, I sell mine unframed. I mean, the gallery took mine and he was quite happy to take them unframed, but he did say in some ways it would be really good if they were framed because then you're really showcasing off this this piece of art in, in yeah. this amazing frame. Um, but he said at the end of the day, if, if I feel like it, I need to do that, he said, I'll just do that in the gallery, which was quite nice, but... Um, they do make such a difference. That's a, that's a problem, isn't it? I, I wish that there were framers that kind of do loan frames. <laughs> yeah, well, your, you see, yours as well. I think you can get away with it more if... Well, because it's a stretch yeah, canvas. Yeah, it's a stretch canvas, you, know. you see. But mine is on a board, like a two <clears throat> yeah. millimetre thick. Looks very much like a bit of mount board, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, you can't really... It doesn't no. do it justice to show it, show that. No. So it needs something, but... I just can't warrant spending that amount of money when, one, it might not sell, and then, two, it puts the price up beyond probably what people locally would pay for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a pain in the arse, that is. But, yeah, so that that's quite good. I've got, I might do those. I might actually try framing them up today. I've got some frames. And then I've also found a new material that I really love. Oh, um, not that. You were using something on Instagram the other day, and it was like a um, pussy. squashy that was hideous. Putty. Oh, God, I thought that hideous. looked awful. I couldn't believe you. I thought, that is not Tara. She's not using that, surely. It was just awful. It was awful. That was, that was and I love the brand. Um, there's a brand, I think they're called Via Comp. Basically, they call themselves Art Graph by Via something, being with V anyway. Um, but they have loads of products under the brand Art Graph. And some of the, it's really inventive kind of stuff and interesting materials, but that's that was just beyond. I had to try it because it's like a put, a graphite putty that is actually water soluble, but I didn't even get to the water bit. It was so messy and it just fell apart. It was awful. Um, yeah, your hands look black. Found, oh, I found Posca Posca mop markers. You know Posca the Posca mark, acrylic markers. Yeah, the brand. Well, they've mm-hmm. started making these graffiti markers. I don't know if you see. I made a video with them on, but they're. I, I saw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god, I love them. <laughs> and I actually yesterday tried doing a canvas in my style, oh. but instead of using acrylic inks, I used these the markers for the background, and then did the rest my usual way with the charcoal and i wasn't sure how the near colors were going to work on the canvas and i have to say it was much harder to get pastel on canvas but yeah it doesn't yeah. look bad 
Not bad. It's interesting because you're experimenting with all these different things and yet your style is very much consistent. So it's quite nice that you're able to play. You're still able to play yeah. even though you're not playing with your style anymore, but you're playing with how you, you know, your, your mediums, which is, must be really fun. And I guess that must be um, quite a good way of leading into the actual episode that we're talking about today. So we've been talking about half an hour already, yeah, which is finding your art niche and... Um, you know where we where we fit into this art world that we're in, um, and and as you well pointed out, Tara, um, in the notes, you should definitely not feel like you need a niche if you're purely painting for fun. You don't need a style, or you don't you don't need to fit into any kind of niche. Um, if if painting's a hobby and it's just something you love to do, it really doesn't matter. Um, I think most people are drawn to certain subjects, though, aren't they? You know, yeah, regardless I think so. of. Yeah, whether they're selling or not. But if you do want to sell your work, it's definitely easier if you are known for a certain subject or style. If you really don't have a style yet, there's there's no rush. I always think don't overthink it because it will come naturally over time. And I do think when you sort of push it and you're too much, you know, too busy panicking, oh, I haven't got a style yet, I haven't got a style, you can kind of almost um, stop it happening naturally by forcing it. But uh, if you are struggling to decide who you are as an artist and how to describe yourself, maybe perhaps you've got a website and you don't know what your tag should be, your tagline, you know, what am I? Just ask yourself the following questions. Number one, if you could only paint in one subject for the rest of your life, what would that subject be? Number two, if you could paint that subject in one style only for the rest of your life, what would that be? And number three, if you could work with just one medium for the rest of your life what would that be so if your answers were um i like painting landscapes i like painting abstracts and i like painting with mixed media then for now that's what you should market yourself as a landscape mixed media artist because it's always good to be able to describe yourself uh, you know who you are as an artist right now even if that is likely to change in the even in the near future it doesn't really matter i do think it's quite good to be able to have a description of who you are um and the likelihood is if you've chosen those as your answers you'll be doing mainly that anyway but at least it then allows yourself plenty of time to experiment with other subjects and mediums so that you can evolve as your answers change but you've still sort of got a description as, of who you are right now what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I always, yeah, I always think that you should think of it almost like this big triangle. And you've got this massive base at the bottom of this triangle, and that's where we all are when we start because there's just so many choices, so many different things we could do. So you could, you could be doing faces or you could do, be flowers or and then you could be in a multitude of mediums and stars. And then gradually, as you paint and draw more, you go further up the triangle because you've kind of narrowed down the things you like you've narrowed down your subjects you've narrowed down your mediums until you get to, to nearer the top I mean you probably never actually get totally to the top because you, you, you well you probably don't want to get to the top do you because you still want to have a little bit of flexibility you want to allow well you want to keep it interesting exactly. you play, don't yeah. you? but but yeah. I think I think the key is to try drawing and painting lots and lots of different things and eventually you'll discover what you like and I think as well, don't discount things too early because you might be surprised and actually like drawing things that you didn't think you would. Like you might find you like drawing buildings once you find the. I doubt it. <laughs> no, but once you find the way that you like drawing, yeah. because I think at yeah. the moment you haven't found a a style that you like drawing them in, because we tend to yeah. try and draw too neatly and all stuff like that. And I think mm. a big key. And something we'd advocate is to take part in different challenges and to see what subjects or mediums that you're really drawn to. And those challenges really help you maybe stick with one subject for a set period of time. And that means you actually give it a chance. You try different things. You you might discover you completely hate it, but then you just try a different challenge and do a different subject. Um, I think also try creating a mood board. And then on that, that could be a Pinterest board or a physical board. But all different... Oh, did you hear me? Sorry, I just knocked the microphone then. Um, but basically <laughs> try putting pictures of all the art that you like, maybe all the subjects you like, all the styles, maybe all the different colourways. 
And if you have something like that in front of you, it's just a real source of inspiration. That's the sort of thing I did. Do you remember my find your art style challenge I did ages ago? Yes, I do. That yes. is what I well, I was going to mention that a bit. Later. Oh, right. Yeah, well, that on. is what I did for that. And it was it's just having that source that reminded me, oh, yeah, I really like how that person works. I really like that line work. I like that colour. I think something like that is really mm. useful to have in front of you. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, I, you mentioned the Pinterest board and things like that. And I, mean, I must admit, I, I had that. But um, because it's in a computer, on a computer, you have to switch it on and then find the folder and then f- sit there and look at it. I just never did. It's really strange. It, it's, I'm, I'm the kind of person that needs something there in front of me on a wall or something. So if I was going to have a mood board, I'd, I'd, have it, um, I'd have it on my wall if I could and just stick things on it. So it's a visual reference to look at and I just see it even if I'm not looking for it. Yeah, you know. I like that but as yeah. well. I mean, you and, can always print everything yeah. out, can't you, and stick it down. Mm. Yeah. Another good thing to do is to look at your past favourite pieces of your own work and then see if there is a uh, a common a common thread between them. So, for instance, you might notice that in all of your or lots of the works that you really like, they, they just seem to have this particular brush stroke perhaps a bit of pointillism in certain areas of the work. And maybe that is a sign that you could try making more of that one element to pull your future work together into something more cohesive. And it's funny because it takes me back to um, a couple of weeks ago. You know my friend Kerry? Yeah. She's also going for Portrait Artist of the Year. All right. So she's so I've got both of you. I've I've got I'm banking on one of you getting in because I want to go to London and watch it. <laughs> did you make her draw us um, celebrity as well? No, I didn't oh. need to. No, <laughs> she's she's got celebrities oh, all right. over her wall at the moment. She's she's like knocking them out left, right, and centre. But Kerry's one of these artists as well that doesn't have a specific style and that's something she's always struggled to describe who she is as an artist because she does so many different things and she seems to be one of these people who's really annoying and just good at all of them (laughs) but she she doesn't concentrate on one particular thing so you know going for this portrait artist of the year oh you know I really need to I need to figure out what style who am I what style am I going to do what is my style and I was over there the other day and she said, could you come and have a look at all these paintings? I really need, I need to, I need your opinion on, you know, what's, what I should enter, what, what you like, what you don't like. And, and it's, she was right. There was, there was, I mean, they were all beautiful paintings, like amazing, but all completely different. So they could have been drawn by completely different artists. Um, but what, when I sort of looked at them all, I could see, that in each one, regardless of which style it was, there was just this particular mark. Mate, it was actually pointillism, sort of, not not dots as such, but little little sweeps. And she would use these little marks in all of those paintings in some areas. One might just be the jumper. One might be a little bit of background. And and in each one, I thought, oh, there she is. She's used that mark again. She's used that mark again. And I said, and I said to her, well. Clearly, that is something you um, you love to do because she's done a lot of pointillism paintings as well and portraits, and she's really good at it. And so I said, "Well, why don't you embrace that? You know, if that's what you like to do, then embrace pointillism, and you know, concentrate on that for a while." Anyway, um, so but what I'm trying to say is, sometimes even if you think everything you're doing is completely different then you you might find if you look close enough that there's something that pulls them all together and maybe that that little something is a little clue as to what you should be looking at trying to to do a bit more of and you don't have to stick to a particular subject either to have a style you don't have to stick to portraits or or landscapes if you look at someone like van gogh i mean he painted everything from sunflowers to self-portraits to an interior of his bedroom Two landscapes, yes, and they all look like his. Uh, And and you can tell they are all his paintings. It doesn't matter what they are. And I think the obvious element that shows the paintings are his is his his, um, recognisable brushstrokes he uses. 
and and he also uses a very similar colour palette in all of his paintings. But it's often these just real simple things that make a painting recognisably yours. It doesn't have to be that, oh, it, you know, Sandra Busby always paints wine bottles and marbles. So you I'm know? Go- I mean, as it happens, <laughs> at the moment I do, but <laughs> it'd be nice if, if I could, if I did branch out one day, if onto other subjects somebody would say oh yeah I can tell that's the Sandra Busby painting you know so I'm quite curious now Kerry is she doing some more portraits with that uh more mark making in it no not she not for the funny enough not for the portrait artist of the year there are the ones she has done there are elements of that in it but I don't the one the main one because she she's asked she was saying oh you know which do you think I should enter funny enough um, well, I won't go too deeply into it because it's you know it's yeah it's I'm her not, thing. I'm not sure I meant to talk about it too much. <laughs> it's her thing, but I will say, I will say that um, she had all these paintings that she'd she'd done and she'd been practicing doing paintings in four hours and whatever, and she'd sort of put got them out all out. And there was this one. I was like, oh yeah, that's lovely. Really, really beautiful colors. Da da da. That's that one, and there's this one, and then there was just this other one. She went, oh, there's one more. So one more I'll, I'll show you, but it's very, um, it's not really finished. It was something I spent like an hour and 15 minutes on or something, and I haven't really sort of worked it more than that. And she showed me this portrait, <laughs> and I straight away went, oh, my gosh, that is the one. It is absolutely the one. Because I know her as yeah. well, the other ones were quite, um, uh, what's the word, sort of gazing into the distance kind of portraits. Yeah. Um, whereas this one was a real, it, it, it was much, showed much more of her personality, right. and I recognised her far more in this painting that she'd done than than, than I did in the yeah. others. And um, yeah, so she sort of went, she did another one similar to that, and she's entered that All one. Right. So yeah, so she obviously doesn't hopes, mind. Hope, hope one of you she gets it. Doesn't mind self portraits then. No, um, no, no, not at all. Ugh, no, hate them. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to detach from it from being yourself. I know, but it's, you? it's one of those things where I I take quite a long time when I'm drawing a portrait. Well, I mean, even though they don't look like the person necessarily, I start with deliberately. Um, but I take a long time to find a face I like, and so my face isn't one I'd like. <laughs> it's not one I'd pick. <laughs> Is that that's why you've never drawn me? I isn't have it? drawn I you. Just say before. it. <laughs> I have drawn you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have, yeah. But, yeah, it's just that thing where, you know, sometimes you have to be really drawn to a face. So, uh, so anyway... Yeah, I was, you're I never drawn taking... to your own, are you? No, but I was taking loads well, I think of photographs you have to scrutinise yourself. As... Yeah. Mm. Well, when you take photos of yourself as well, yeah. you look, look and like, oh, my God, that one I look about 100. And then you take a look, I think I look all right in that one. It's like, it's very odd, isn't it? It is odd. It's really odd. And, and you know, when I've I've sort of used my own face in the just yeah. in a mirror, just as practice, because then you're still drawing from life, yeah. aren't you, and not from a photo. And what I found is I'm drawing away, and, I'm, and I look at the drawing and I just think, God, I look so old. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I've got jowls. And then I look at my face in the mirror and think, oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when you draw them, because obviously you're as artists, you tend to, and also you're making the most of any wrinkle. You say, oh, I love that. It's a fold there, and there's this bit of light there. Oh, I like that to pop. And so really what you're doing is you're probably exaggerating those things, yeah. perhaps, or they're more evident in the photo, in the drawing than they probably are ever going to be in real life but yeah so I don't I don't like drawing I would never paint a self-portrait of myself no. because I would not want to hang a portrait of me on no. my wall if I was going to paint a portrait of someone it would be it's more like to be Paul or one of my kids yeah, or something no, you know I totally know what you mean and, and actually yeah. that kind of brings us on to our, our next uh, subtopic which is thinking about your reference material because that can make so much difference to how you paint i think so you might want to try creating your own reference material you might want to use royalty free images or you might actually want to try working completely from imagination and see what happens you could also use ai to generate reference images to inspire you but we're going to talk about that more aren't we in a future episode yeah, and when you say use AI, you don't mean use one of your eyes and shut one eye. <laughs> you yeah, mean artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. So that's that scary thing I don't like. Yes. Tara has managed to persuade me that we're going to do an episode on AI. So mm. yeah, it's not going to be all. Hyper- <laughs> we're going to make it fun. It's though. not going to be tech. We're going to make it really fun. Yeah. No. No, no, no. No, we'll, we'll, we'll try and um, match it to the level of intelligence of our listeners. Uh, I'm going to say more like <laughs> ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't be rude to our uh, listeners. I'm so they sorry. They're far more They've intelligent than off. we are. <laughs> well, they can't well, be if they're listening to our to podcast. Us, yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you really don't have any idea what your style is, ask yourself what work, apart from your own, that you most enjoy looking at. And why do you like it? You know, maybe it's um, certain subjects you like to, to look at, or maybe it's certain styles of mark making. Maybe it's something completely different. But whatever it is, try introducing similar elements without obviously copying um, into areas of your own work and then build on that. And once you find something you like, concentrate on that for a while maybe for a few weeks see how you feel about it in the end funny enough do you know who one of the artists that uh, i really should sponsor us because i'm sure we mentioned her way too much but um if i could go back to the beginning and do a specific kind of art what do you think it would be well i now know because i know who you're going to talk about (laughs) so it's it's going to be uh bodies isn't it female bodies Carmel, Carmel, I love Carmel's work so much. I absolutely love it. And when I look at her stuff, I think, oh, God, do you know what? That I love the idea of doing that. I absolutely love the idea of doing that. And, yeah, if I could go back now, I think I would love to do, um, yeah, sort of the... Do you do abstract just, as well? Uh, yeah. So I have a challenge I'd, for I'd Basically, I'd, I'd adopt her style completely and I'd nab it before she got it so that she couldn't do that anymore right. because I would be doing it and she'd have to draw wine bottles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I have, I have a little challenge for you. Oh! Because you, because you know how you were going to challenge me because you were, trying to, you were trying to make me draw an extra celebrity but portrait artist of the year, so you were trying to fool me into that wasn't i was your... gonna swap challenges no you were trying to fool me i was into trying to i was trying to um... manipulative plan <laughs> wait weren't you to get me to draw celebrities so anyway my challenge to you is you want to do these sketches in the morning so why not do some female figures but well, yeah. abstract them a little bit yeah I could, well yeah abstracting them would be interesting yeah well, yeah, but yeah. you don't. I think I think with abstract that I think it's a learnt experience. I don't <coughs> think, yeah, because I, I think do. we assume. I think we assume that well, we should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's a learnt. But no, but so, I like the exact style of Carmel. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, I like well, it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want it to be we, my we, own. I we'll <laughs> just buy a, buy a Carmel then. I don't mean by her, I mean by her painting. I'll, I'll, I'll paint exactly like her and then I'll say, here, I'll come, I'll sell that one for me and say yeah. it's yours, it's fine. No, no, I, I know what you mean. No, I, I find her, I do find her stuff very, very inspiring and I think of all the artists, um, uh, you know, online, I, I just love her stuff. Uh, do you know what, as well, I will say this, um, you know I love your stuff. I really do. However, the other day, you, you posted something, I don't know if it's on Facebook or Instagram. Right. Oh, I think it might have been a story, actually. And I was just, I had, do you know what, I had to photograph it. Was it a building? Put it in my inspiration folder. No, it oh. was not a building. God, no. Now, why? When did you buy, when did you draw a building? I, I, um, I did, Steph, Steph Coley, she does, who's, who's on Instagram, she does a, she does a Zoom, uh, she does both a mixed media and a collage class. And one of them was buildings, and it was a very modern building. Do you not remember this? No. Anyway, so um, she basically gives you a picture, and then you interpret right. it how you like. And mm-hmm. I deliberately done the a building, not the portrait week, because I wanted to do something different, obviously. Yeah. And it was yeah, a very, yeah. very modern building, so I had to draw that. Oh, well, I did look at that. I didn't want to do it, it like you. I didn't want it to be exact or anything like that. So I just made it very, very colourful. Yeah. You did this thing yeah. um, where you had painted, I think you, you'd done some kind of online uh, class oh. or live drawing. And it was, it was um, like fashion models. Yes, cabaret couture. Swishing their drink, 
the drug drinks, swishing their um their dresses around, and I looked at that. I was like, oh my god, they're amazing! I absolutely loved them, and oh, I took really? a picture of it and I put it in my inspiration folder because I was like, yeah, I love that. So um yeah, that sort of thing. I, I just love looking at that kind of thing, which is crazy when you think about how I paint, and when you look at how you do that. Do a class and how Carmel, with me. Do one of those classes with me. Yeah, I, I did sort of. I, it did go through my mind <laughs> for about two um, seconds. <laughs> it did go through my mind. I, I wouldn't mind doing some more classes. I think really, it's Thursday it, evening. You know, Thursday evening. <clears throat> Thursday evening Zoom. Yeah, yeah. I, I just love that idea. But it's interesting, isn't it, that I'm saying to people, you know, if you've got no idea what your style is, ask yourself what work yeah. you like looking at. Well, but the the work I love looking at is actually very abstract and yeah. very, um, and yet that is the polar opposite to how I paint, which is interesting. But my paintings are my natural style. That is what I love to do and that's how I like to paint. However, I would also love to be able to embrace that sort of swishing around and... Um, well, maybe you that you embrace that in your sketchbook. Yes, I think I think that's a very good point, and I and think I that's think, what I need to do. I think you need, need to, to sign up. And we do we do a they do a Thursday morning, which you probably couldn't do, and no. they do Thursday evening. Yeah, because um, the only thing that puts me off is do, does everyone have to show their stuff at the end of it? Oh, is no. it very much? No, like, no, 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 no. You don't have to show anything on this. You don't have to be on camera because because they're not nude. Because when you go to an online life drawing class and they're nude, you have to mm. show your face on camera because they want to make sure basically you're not taking photos and not putting them online or whatever. Um, but with yeah. this, it's you know they're all closed. It's just fashion yeah. drawing, so you don't even have to be on camera. And you go. Yeah, when I you're... like the idea of them being clothed as yeah. well because I think it gives you more to play with, doesn't it? Like the movement of the yeah. fabric and stuff like that. Sometimes painting nudes can be a bit more like it was. I don't know. There's there's less to work with, isn't there? In some ways, yeah, uh, yeah. But they've also I mean, got a Patreon, so then you could do it any time if you wanted. And that's cool. I like. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. I like that idea. But yeah, once once you've like say for instance, like I've say I didn't have a style. Yeah. So I didn't have a style and I was saying to you right now, I really like your fashion things you do. I love those and I love the work of Carmel Jenkins. I think hers is amazing. That's what I'd love to to try and do, something like that. But my yeah. own version of it, obviously. Yeah. Um I think I think once you've you've found that subject that you love, or well, let's say a subject then. Say, for instance, forget the style. Say I realise that you do these fashion things and Carmel does these female figures. Maybe I'd be thinking, okay, well, perhaps it's it's female females that I want to draw. Yeah. You know, maybe it is, the, is um, I don't know, dancers or whatever, but it's obviously bodies I want to draw. Once you've sort of thought, okay, that's the subject, because, I mean, obviously mine's glass. I like painting glass. That's my subject. But say, for instance, you you found that subject, there is still thousands of different ways you can actually interpret that subject isn't there from completely oh, yes. abstract yeah. like you or to hyper ab- uh, hyper realistic so i mean you've always known tara haven't you you've always known from day one from the day we started talking faces were the things that you were drawn to the most and they always have been haven't they oh not when but i was younger fine- no no, but I'm talking about from when yes, we yeah, got yeah. to know each other. Well, actually, so what, no, five, I didn't. Five, six, it was only after I did that February Faces Challenge. Prior to that, I didn't know. Oh, yes. It, but yes, you're right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But that was so you found you, you straight away when you did that, you were like, yes, this is the subject. Yeah. I love doing this. But then you were finding that it was your style that you were struggling with. Okay, I like doing faces, but what is my style then? But what's, what's different about you? What, what's different about you than anyone else on the planet is that you made a conscious effort to actually, literally find your style. Like, I want it now and I'm going to find it and I'm going to find a way of finding it. And you, you, your style is completely unmistakable now. I don't actually know anyone who does anything like you do. So the way you did that is you... Well, first of all, you did a find your art style experiment, didn't you? I did, which I think yeah. was over about sixty. Was it about sixty days or something? I yeah, can't remember. That was, that was sixty it, days. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is on YouTube as well, isn't it? Called find your art style experiment yeah, or something nice like short that. And snappy, not. Yeah. <laughs> and then you did another one, um, which where you painted fifty ways 50 to draw a face. Faces. 
Yeah, tell us about that. So that, I would say, is a... Um, once you know your subject, I would say 50 ways to draw your, draw a face, but obviously replace that or whatever your topic is. 50 ways to draw a marble. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? 50 ways to draw <laughs> yeah. a bottle. 50 ways to draw a flower. You get the picture. Basically, what yeah. you do is mm. pick a pick your subject. But when I say pick your subject, I mean very like pick one photo. Either take a photo. This is assuming you do semi representational art. Um, so I picked yeah. one photo of one guy who was quite hot, and then I decided that I would draw him every day. So one that takes away any decision making. So you haven't got to find. Well, it doesn't take decision making, but it takes the finding the photo decision making out of the way. I know what I'm drawing every day. And then what you're concentrating on is how many different ways can I interpret this face? And I think by doing that, it means you really have to experiment because, oh, you did a pencil sketch. You can't just do the same type of pencil sketch the next day. You can draw it differently with a pencil. Um, so then what you do is take all the elements that you enjoyed doing or that worked out well and you try and pull those together and develop them more afterwards and that's that's what I did basically yeah so you you weren't doing like okay 50 ways to draw a face I'm going to do this face in pencil one day then I'm going to draw it in pen then I'm going to paint it then I'm going to do watercolor then I'm going to do a pastel what you were doing you weren't just using new new mediums but you were also using different styles each day weren't you yes so you might do you, a, quite a realistic pencil one and then the next day you'd do like hyper abstract using charcoal and yeah a bit of pastel or whatever yeah. but obviously you don't have to do that because if you know you like no. drawing realistically yeah you might just do a pastel one day and you might do a mixed yeah. media but each day make it look realistic but it's yeah. i didn't want to draw totally realistically yeah no so but so basically what you're doing is really focusing in on experimenting with that one image so you've taken that decision away so all you're now thinking about is how can i make this look different and i just think yeah and then discover things that way and i think then the mediums kind of you then sort of choose the ones that lend themselves to that particular style that you like because if you like hyperrealism, you're not going to want to use oil pastels, are you? No, unless you went really big, more... I guess. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you were going to... So, yeah, once you've got... I think you probably need to sort of, dis... not decide, but kind of find the style you most... Or the approach you like best. And then perhaps the medium that suits you best after you found that, do you think? Well, what I did is I just had... I had a series of prompts... For this and then also i did something which i posted on our kicking the crates instagram actually the other day which is called a master's mashup i don't know if you saw that oh, i'm just looking now <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically what you do and you don't even have to use the old masters but i did that for the reasons that it it wouldn't be fair for me to use contemporary artist um, i can't see this you, on a, oh was it a story oh, wait, yeah, uh, no, it's uh, a reel. So basically what you do okay. is look for three artists that you really like. And like I say, I used the old, some of the older, you know, out of copyright kind of thing. Well, actually, one of them wasn't. But, yeah. but basically take, so you have a picture of each of theirs and then you have a picture of, well, in my case, a face that you're going to draw. And yeah. then you say, okay, I like how Kadinsky does those squiggly lines with the little dots or something you know whatever mm, yeah and so you think i'm going to use that for part of my face somehow i'm going to somehow bring those squiggly lines in then you look at one of the other artists and think oh, i really like the colors they've used there so i'm going to use those or i really like i did a mondrian so i like the way they put squares in so i'm going to put a square down and then i'm going to draw over the square to make it a collar actually you did that recently didn't you with um something like you were talking about mad not mad max <laughs> the matrix sorry the matrix didn't you say something about you you were putting these little squares in your yeah but that wasn't, isn't the same but yeah but i yeah i put these little boxes down the box it's a bit of a thing with the matrix <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's the same. It is the same, though, isn't it? You're not taking you're not taking inspiration from other artists. You're taking 
um, inspiration from a science it was fiction a, it movie. It was a nod to the film, basically. <laughs> yeah, which I found was really a I think, who would think of doing that? You, who know, would think but... of that? Well, it's because I'd started drawing these falling lines. And do you remember on The Matrix, I had a kind of fall in... Oh, you haven't watched it, have you? No, I haven't watched it. You couldn't ones believe and it when I hadn't watched it. No. Oh. And then these it, the boxes kind of reminded me of it for some reason. But no, this is basically, you take the three artists and you take elements of bits all there were and then you add yeah. a bit yourself into it as well. And that was one of the things I was doing. But I was doing it with some contemporary artists as well, not just... You know the old masters. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, I should. It, maybe I should try a Carmel slash Tara Roscoe slash Sandra Busby. Exactly, so exactly. With a bit of me injected into it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> or you could even yeah. try a bit of Carmel, a bit of Van Gogh, mm. a bit of. Do you know? Oh no, yeah. You, no. <laughs> but you know, what I mean? you could take. Yeah. The, no, I wouldn't. Uh, do you know what though it, this would all just be the, the stuff i'd like to have fun with on the side well yeah well, what's wrong with that it would be it would be my mistress but not mistress it'd be my mister it would be my other my bit on the side yeah well, that's <laughs> in the right. art world <laughs> nothing wrong with that i wouldn't dream of having a real bit on the side but in my art studio i think it's acceptable yes <laughs> yeah why not and who knows some of that might eventually flow over yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure. But yeah, I think I think that could be fun. And, and when I was mentioning the prompts, they were just a list of words, like uh, or little phrases for this fifty ways to draw a face. So I might have uh, use only straight lines, or do you know what I mean? I'd have little prompts like yeah. that. So yeah, I think that That's, can. Yeah. Not necessarily that one. But where know. do you get these prompts from? Then do you make your own? Well, what I did was I went through and just looked at different bits of art. Mm. And I thought, oh, they've used a lot of straight lines in that picture. Oh, they've used, you know, blocks or yeah. some, they've added circles. Do you know, it's, <clears throat> it's interesting though, isn't it? Because the, the one thing you have to be a bit careful of is not to then become the person who paints like that person. Yeah. Because you're not, never going to be that person, so don't try to paint like them. Because you're going to be the the one that's not as good. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. I was watching, you know, Portrait Artist of the Year that was on last. The last I know what you're going to say, Christian Hook like. <clears throat> oh, you're that's interesting. You've just said that because yeah. I haven't. I've had that on record for ages. I haven't had oh, time to sit and watch yeah. it. And then just recently, I thought I must start watching that. And because po- uh, might be football the one at previous. the moment, yeah, go on. sorry. Um, no, it's, uh, Paul watches the football um, when his team plays, and it's usually on sort of once a week or something, maybe twice. So, so sometimes I'm, like, oh, I'm going to go and watch one of those. So I'll catch up on one of those. So I'm still watching the series, the lot that's just gone. And there was a, a woman on there, and I don't, uh, you know, I. I did she get through? I can't really remember. But anyway, she'd drawn this woman with great big hair. You know, the author, the, the woman with the big sort of Afro hair. She bought in an Afro comb and she can't was remember. embracing the hair. And she, she looked fabulous. She was wearing a big pink tracksuit. Oh, right. Just looked amazing. Anyway, the woman who, who painted her, um, she was, she'd started on a black surface um, and she'd been painting these little sort of cubes of colour, which looked amazing. And her piece was amazing, but what I noticed is at towards the end, she sort of pulled um, a, her brush th- through from the background and sort of brought it across the hair. It did look really effective. It really did. Um, however, the first thing I thought was, that's Christian Hook. And she'd kind of almost turned her own painting into something that looked like oh, she's got that from Christian Hook. I mean, he did it with a credit card, I think, but she did do it with a brush. But it just looks so much like that. And yeah. I thought, oh, I've seen that quite a bit in other people doing the same thing. And There was a man who did it. To... I, I was thinking of another man <clears throat> who did it very much. Like, yeah. Oh, well, maybe I'm not there uh, yet. Maybe I'm not, I haven't reached that one yet. But I, the, the one thing I would say is that there are times when you sort of see people doing liking the same thing from a very well-known artist and then using it in their work but you not changing it enough and and it sort of you straight away instead of thinking wow what a great painting you've just done it's oh that's a good painting it reminds me of christian hook yeah which is not what you want really no, is it's it not. no 
you want to be your own. So it's finding a way of taking elements from other people, definitely, but perhaps trying to do that in a less obvious way. Yeah, be inspired and perhaps just... But try thinking like that, but in a different way. I don't know how you would do that. I mean, I, I mean I'm inspired by Chris, Christian Hook. I love his stuff. But if I started dragging credit, credit cards through my wine bottles, I imagine it would look amazing. <laughs> but then I, I'd straight away know that, yeah, people would think, oh, yeah, that's what Christian Hook does. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's difficult, so isn't it? I wouldn't because do it. You, because you might do it, and then you might find a different way to do it, if you know what I mean, and it could be amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah so, but you probably wouldn't absolutely see if i was painting like you um i wouldn't dare do it because i'd have invested all those hours into that piece and i'd be like oh yeah it's make or break isn't it at that point it's harder to experiment yeah. when you do paintings like this because yeah i suppose you could yeah you could just ruin it in one foul sweep yeah. <laughs> So, I, saw, I saw a woman on TikTok. Something I should do. I saw a woman on TikTok and she was painting faces, but she would do something similar where she would basically, they were big, so she'd drag a, what are those big scrapey things? I can't remember what they're called. Like squeegee type thing, a cross bit. And it, oh, like a, like a window cleaner. Yeah, but it was more like a flat thing you'd use for like ink, yeah. you know, if you were pulling ink up. Oh, I see, yeah. And she mm-hmm. she was kind of dragging bits of that, and it it looked amazing. But it she'd she'd obviously spent hours painting this face, and it's like, <gasps> do you know what I mean? It's like that could yeah. make or break it. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because I think there comes a time where you kind of have to be brave and oh, yeah. experiment if you want to yeah. evolve. And I think that's something I probably do. Maybe what it's really it's really hard though, because now the gallery's got them, and the first thing they said to me is, "Do not." change anything yeah because now you're in the gallery it means that we we do not want you to suddenly start changing styles well now of course I'm not going to suddenly start changing my style however I don't want to feel like I can't experiment if I want to and maybe it's you know there I am at a point now where I think oh maybe I want to sort of evolve a little bit and I've done this for a long time in the way I've done it for a long time and perhaps now I'd like to introduce some more textures or something yeah, i don't know why, why not I, I feel like i've reached that point and i you know I, I i not to a point where it would not be mine anymore but just enough that i could maybe start prodding well, what, in the side of of a, a slight of, of evolution if you like what about you know how you've had two paintings on the go yeah what about one is completely what you normally do the other one, yeah. you push. Yeah, you experiment more. Yeah. yeah, and don't like look at it as uh, this is or this is going to be one that I'm going to not going to sell. May, I mean, I've got some old cheap canvases that I I wouldn't use because I can't. I wouldn't use them. I wouldn't use a cheap canvas um, if I was going to put it on my website. I'd want it to be the the really good quality canvas. Yeah. Of course, I would. However, from years ago when I used to just be you know practicing and everything i've still got packs of old sort of reeves canvases you know yeah, old reeves yeah. art boards and there's nothing wrong with them i wouldn't use them for a painting i was going to sell um so perhaps that's the kind of thing i could have a little play around on because i've got nothing i'm not using an expensive canvas yeah. i know i can't sell it anyway because it's on that canvas so perhaps that would give me more freedom yeah permission yeah. to oh yeah freedom a bit like you we talk about the yeah. sketchbook don't buy a beautiful sketchbook buy a one with nice with decent quality paper in it but one that doesn't have a fancy cover as long you're as less likely to be precious as long as the canvas cheap canvas isn't so bad that it's yeah. hard for you to paint on because then it just makes everything a struggle. As in, because you, you paint exactly. on linen, don't you? Isn't that a lot smoother? I do. Yeah, so I paint on fine linen and um, and it's a really lovely quality one. Actually, funny enough, the ones I'm talking about, actually, they're a bit rough, so it might, might not work. Yeah, you want. might have to go in between. Can yeah. you get a cheap linen one? Mm. Probably just go, what I should do is just go small. Yeah, as in and just use one to practice yeah. mark making with various techniques on, rather than painting. Well, I, I don't thing. think that I don't, I don't know, know if that works though, because for me, well, I wouldn't be able to just practice mark making. It would just 
yeah for, for me yeah so i would have to paint something but then try it and but then, maybe you would and yeah. i don't know i don't know anyway don't know. should we go back to the podcast <laughs> Yeah, uh, have we not finished? No, <laughs> I, I, I was just talking say, about three hours. But it's almost what we were saying, basically, to, to look for new techniques and materials to experiment with, almost like we were just talking about. Uh, but you never mm, know mm. how this can add something new to your work. And, and as you know, I love playing with different materials and I'm always excited yeah. about the possibilities of what I might bring to my work, like those Posca markers. Um, you know, maybe I can work on canvas. Who knows? Yeah, because I look at you sometimes on, on Instagram, oh, what's she found now? Now what's she working with? What is that? I, <laughs> Where does she find this I stuff? I got a few bits for Christmas. <laughs> that was what I love it was. I put them on my wish list. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so ah, it's like, well, put this okay. weird thing on my wish list. Yeah. Mm. If you're stuck for inspiration, there are some websites, I don't know if you've seen these before, that share colour palettes that you can use yes yeah. you, you can actually use a little dropper can't you and you can actually say i want to know what that color is and you can use this little dropper and it tells you the the well it doesn't actually it tells you the kind of um computer code color doesn't it what it yeah is. but you can you can also go on and just i think because it calls sites like you could look search color palettes and they they'll show you yeah. what colors work well together and you might want to try those and you work but you can also take a photograph and use like you said the dropper and that will tell you what yeah. colours are in that photograph that you might use as a palette. And there is actually a mm. challenge, and I was trying to find it, and could I for life, and I couldn't. There's one that gives you colours each, I don't know if it's each week or each day, to use in a painting. And the idea is it pushes you out your comfort zone of the colours you'd sort of normally try using. But sorry, I couldn't oh, find right. it, so I do apologise for that. But and now we get into the bit, which is... The answers to our last question, which was, if you could go on a painting or sketching holiday, where would you go and why? Okay, so first of all, we've got Carol Whitmore. So many places all over the world would be amazing, aside from my own backyard, community, neighbourhood and city. I would write down five places that are my favourites, put them in a basket and mix them all up, close my eyes and choose one and be excited about whichever one was chosen. My five, I'm still collecting data. I've, I've got Karen Liz Creative. And she said, I would like to go to Provence in France, live in an old farmhouse for a while and bike and swim and make art. It just seems like such a dreamy place. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, Provence. Even the word Provence. That's posh, isn't it? it sounds, yeah, it sounds sort of oh, cultural yeah. and all the rest of it. Anyway, it's art o'clock. I'm already doing it. I'm going to an art retreat in Morocco in May. I'm excited to see the inspiring colours and architecture, oh, I can't even say that word, and architecture of somewhere totally different than where I live. Oh, imagine, imagine Morocco. I bet that is a real colourful place. I've got Article 5 and she says, Wales had, it to, Wales had it all. Fields, lakes, mountains, rolling hills, architects and sheep. Lots of sheep. <laughs> she didn't say lots of sheep, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's so true. Yeah, that's so true. And she's done these little, she's done these little um, icons Emojis, afterwards, yeah. and I was trying to work out what they were. A lot of rain. Oh, yeah, There's I can see now. There. Yeah, lots Street. of rain in yeah. Wales. I do love Wales, though. It's a beautiful I've place. Been once. Um, I've this is an interesting one. I've got Camper Sketcher. My favourite place is in my camper car, an art room on wheels. Now, in freezing winter, it takes me one or two hours away from home. During warm summer, it takes me far away and I can sketch many places in one week. In my camper, I have a mini bathroom, kitchen and bed, so I can easily go wherever I want. And um, again, we've got these icons, a little camper van, <laughs> a little paint palette and a little, See, and a little I've globe. I've never heard of a but camper how cool. car. Have you heard of a camper well, I, car? I guess she means a camper van, does yeah. she? We, maybe she's American or something. Yeah. We call it a camper van, but... I love the idea that basically what she's got is is an art studio, a mobile art studio, which is so cool, no, isn't it? it? Is. If you're a landscape artist, oh wow, yeah, amazing. Yeah. I've got Robinson Abbey, and he says Lisbon and Bristol, UK, for the street art. Oh yeah, Bristol. I've never been to Lisbon, but I've been to Bristol. Yeah, lots of streets in Bristol. <laughs> no, I, I actually love I love the um, the West. The I've been West, to Bristol South Zoo, West, the country. Yeah. Oh, have yeah. you? Oh, I've never been. No, no. I've been to Bath. I think Bath is my favourite place in this country, right. actually. I absolutely love it. There's there's nothing 
that you can get anywhere else that you can't get in Bath to paint. Absolutely beautiful place. Um, Catherine's Sketchbook. There are so many wonderful locations I could not pinpoint just one. I'm Scottish, so I'd obviously say somewhere like Skye or the Highlands, but honestly, I think there's real beauty to be found in the everyday, and that brings its own special joy and happiness to me. I've got the fairy, Italy, because I'm an urban sketcher and there's so much to sketch. I'd also like to go to Colombia and sketch. That country has some amazing places. I love the idea of Italy as well. I've been to Italy years ago, but I was probably too young to appreciate it. I'd love to go Yeah, I think I'd like Italy. Um, Yeah, you see, the thing is, because when we go away, we sort of have to go away in the winter. So we have to go far to find the sun. But actually, one day, I'd just love to do a road trip and go through Italy. And actually, just very quickly, my neighbours, they went on, um, they did the Rick Stein. You know, Rick Stein did... um, uh, and he did like a boat trip through France, uh, Italy, oh, right. Spain, all these different places. And um, and they just ate their way through. And they basically wrote down every single place he went and they they did exactly what he did. And they said it was amazing. Oh, right. but, yeah, just sampled the wine in every place yeah. and the, the food. It sounded amazing. But yeah, if you were a sketcher and you did something like that, oh, wow. I mean, anyway, JC Featherstone Studio. Oh, another one, Italy. I love everything about it. The history, the landscape, the crumbling architecture, the coast, the mountains, Tuscany, oh my. And then to paint where the masters of Western art owned their skills would be so wonderful someday. And I mean that literally, not wistfully. It's funny, isn't it, about the crumbling architecture? Because when I see crumbling architecture in somewhere like Spain or Italy, places like that, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it looks yeah. so beautiful. It wouldn't... But if you see that here, <laughs> you think, God, that looks really shabby. Yeah, I guess it, I guess it depends. Because I remember when I was young, there's, down the end of the road from me, there was this greenhouse and it was a bit knackered. Somebody had obviously got a bit of a kind of allotment piece there. But I loved this greenhouse because it was all broken. I, I remember I ended up drawing it once. But it's the brokenness that makes yeah. it interesting. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. But, yeah. but when it comes to crumbling well, buildings, yeah, not I suppose so much. it depends again if it's an old if it's an old castle or yeah. something. You could, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. well then that's yeah. a bit different, isn't it? It's got loads of those. I've got <laughs> Andy W Art. I'd love to wander the hiking trails in Norway with my sketchbook. A good chance of some peace and quiet in a stunning landscape which gave rise to myth and legends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go to Norway as well. Um, Maria Cole, San Francisco, the Bay, the Bart, Golden Gate Park, Ocean Beach, the Castro, the people, places and buildings, the smells, atmosphere, fog. Oh, my heart. Not sure I'd fancy <laughs> the fog, but, yeah, the rest sounds quite cool. <laughs> oh, and that's it, isn't it? We've got yeah. another question for you. And uh, that is, what do you think sets your work apart from other art in the same genre? So what do you think sets your work apart from other art in the same genre? And we will read out the best answers in the next episode. Yeah, and as always, you can let us know in the Facebook group, which you haven't joined already. I suggest you join. Um, I... I'll put the question up there if I remember, won't I? (laughs) And also on the Instagram page, which is Kicking the Creatives. And we hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. Don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you are enjoying the podcast, we'd be so grateful if you would leave us a little review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on, or even just a star rating if you don't have any time. Yeah, and don't forget to check out our website where you can also sign up for our newsletter, our Kicking of Creatives newsletter. And there you'll get each, well, I think get twice a month, you'll just get some inspirational tips for the challenges we've got going on and also a list of the challenges coming up and the podcasts and stuff like that. And we never spam. Never, no, ever we don't. Spam. Yeah, and also you can also find, you might want to go out and check out our course which is all about characters and cartoons. And you can go to kickingthecreatives.com forward slash cartoon course to find out more. 
And if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help support Kick in the Creatives, you can now support us by buying us a coffee. In fact, last time Tara didn't buy coffee, she bought knickers, didn't you, Tara? Well, I still haven't got new knickers. Oh, you still didn't buy your knickers? Okay, Tara needs new knickers. (laughs) (laughs) So you can find the link to our website and it's Kofi, Kofi link. Um, And we want to say a very big thank you to our latest supporters. (laughs) But I forgot to write them down. Oh, you idiot. Like for, the first time, for the first time ever, I've forgotten to actually write them down. Um, I know it'll be Joanna Brown. I know it will. Yeah. Um, okay, what I'll do is I'll collect them up and um, I'll, I'll mention them on the next one. <laughs> or do you want me to, I was going to try and find it now, quickly. Did you mention, I think you did Alison last time, didn't you? Yeah, Alison So Cochran. we've got Plotter, spelled P-L-O-T-T-R. Thank you so much for that. And Joanna Brown. Yes, thank you both so, so much. Um, Yes, I'm I'm sure I wrote those down, you know. I must have written them on the original notes and not my own, I think, maybe. Okay. Anyway, we will um, we will leave it there because it's been about five hours recording and we will see you again next time with an episode. Are we going to do the AI one Yeah, next? I think so. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Do you know what? It's made me think of a, uh, another question I could ask um, at some point, but I'm okay. not going to ask it today because we've got a new question, haven't we? We haven't so got what's to that the question bit, have we? this week. We've just... Oh no! We're going to read out the. No, first of all, okay, sorry, I've just got experiment. <laughs> you've got you're supposed to be experiment with mediums. I don't know why I've got that in again. I've already oh, talked well, I've got, about I've got that. In here, experiment with different colour palettes and combinations. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, you go on to that then. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Experiment with different colour palettes and combinations.